Hello, my name is Nicholas Youngblood. This is my case study uh, for Internet Use Violation Standard 2. What I know, Category 1 Problem Identification and Data Analysis. I know that Ms. Walker is a new teacher with a highly rigorous curriculum that's causing stress to parents and students alike. Um, I know this is a highly affluent school district that has a strong connection to academics. Uh, I know that Dr. Forbes has addressed Ms. Walker and provided techniques to reduce stress for students and increase positive interaction. What I need to know is who created this website? Who emailed Ms. Walker? Um, where was this website created? Did the student utilize district technology and violate the internet usage agreement? Why was this created? What happened recently in the classroom for a student to want to create this uh, and threaten for Ms. Walker to disappear? What's the problem? Well, a student created a malicious website utilizing vulgar language and threats towards their teacher. Um, who posted this website and who sent the email bringing this to her attention? And why hasn't Ms. Walker incorporated the techniques to build a positive rapport uh, with her students? It seems the problem is just getting uh, worse and worse. Uh, category 2, Plan of Action and Strategies for Implementation. First thing I want to do is I'm going to notify the superintendent and the school resource officer. Uh, the first strategy would be to review the website with the SRO. If the website's down, show them hard copies because I have printed the hard copies of the website and also um, of the email. The second strategy, I would allow Ms. Walker to discuss the incident with the SRO prior to the school day, provide coverage if necessary. Um, I'm not going to pull her out and have a sub, but I will provide coverage uh, either by an assistant principal or someone else uh, in her department that could cover her for the first period of the class class day, or I'm sorry, school day, and allow her to interview or sit down with myself and the SRO and figure out what the plan of attack is and what, uh, what action we're going to take on this. Um, Category 2, Plan of Action, Strategy for Implementation. Strategy 3 would be to notify the superintendent of a threat and pending investigation. The superintendent may want to allow Ms. Walker time off pending the completion of the investigation, but I'll leave that up to him. But for now, we'll just hold her out of first period while we discuss this matter. Um, step 2 would be contact IT and discuss the incident. Uh, strategy 1 would be to investigate where this email origin and what IP address was used to create the website. Step two, once again, to contact the IT. Uh, strategy two would be to share information with the school resource officer. And then strategy three, identify repercussions of violating the internet usage agreement and legal consequences of creating the malicious website threatening harm to a teacher. Uh, again, for category two, step three would be the student interviews. Uh, first strategy would be to interview four to six members of the class at random. I'll continue to interview as necessary if I'm not getting information out of those kids. Uh, ideally, I, I believe within the first four to six students, you'll have some sort of idea uh, who created this website and why they created it. Strategy two to be contact the parents of those who have been accused. So, for instance, if uh, students four to the four to six students said so and so had done it. Uh, I would immediately want to contact the parents and notify them of the situation and allow the, them to come in. Um, that the, and that there's going to be further investigation of the student and that they, they need to be present during this interview uh, because there are legal ramifications involved with this and you want to make sure the parents are on board, on board and it's not a total surprise to them. Uh, ca category 3 is issue resolution. Uh, promoting the academic success and personal well-being of all students. Uh, to promote the academic success and personal well-being of all students, I must allow due process. Even though signs may point to Ryan, who they tried to Im implicate earlier uh, because of his knowledge of uh, technology and students reaching out to him and things like that uh, and his dislike, there has been quite a few uh, parents and teachers who have contacted uh, Dr. Forbes about Ms. Walker. So Ryan can't be singled out. Uh, if during the interviews he's accused by his classmates, we'll then move forward with further discussion after notification of his parents. Uh, but we cannot single one student out based on hearsay. Uh, there has to be more than, than one, one instance of Ms. Walker accusing a student. Uh, three examples of data. There must be consequences aligned with the school handbook for violating the Internet Usage Agreement and threatening the teacher. Uh, despite this, uh, that this may have just been a prank. Um, the individual has caused undue stress to a district employee and a prank that's really gone too far. Um, two, secondly, would be to create a plan to improve classroom management techniques for Ms. Walker, provide additional support, or support, sorry, uh, further observation uh, for Ms. Walker, and then lastly, uh, provide information for parents on cyberbullying and review the internet usage agreement that might entail sending that back out 
uh, to have a parental and student signature on that, just so everybody's on board of the consequences of violating uh, the internet usage agreement. Category four, debriefing the problem. What was I thinking? Um, I was thinking there has to be consequences for threatening a teacher. Um, you don't want to make any teacher feel unsafe. Uh, it, it is a school climate that promotes safety and security, and that goes for staff and students. Um, this is unjustified. Despite the student's frustration, she does not deserve this. Uh, she has high expectations. She should have utilized the resources that I give her, but there's nothing wrong with having high expectations. Um, kid, somebody's going to be a valedictorian, somebody's going to be a salutatorian, and somebody's not. Um, and so many are not. Uh, and that has no effect on um, the teachings in school. Um, it's Miss Walker's high expectations, and you have to meet them. That's her professional responsibility to ensure uh, there's high expectations, and she has a solid curriculum that she's teaching to all students. What I was feeling, I feel sympathy for the young teacher. Uh, she lives alone. She felt unsafe. She had traveled three hours back from her parents' house and is traveling another three hours to go back uh, and come to, come to work the next day. I'm disappointed by the individual uh, who created this. Um, it's causing undue stress, and ultimately I feel pressure to find out who is responsible uh, so they can have the appropriate consequences. I value support. This is what I value, sorry. I value support uh, for the teachers. Um, it has to be a working relationship between the administrator and the teachers uh, to build a positive school environment. I support the students in due process, and I support communication. I think it's important to inform appropriate parties, inform the parents, inform the IT, inform superintendent, uh, inform the school resource officer. Resolved issues with this, um, there's still going to be student competitors for valedictorian. Um, Ms. Walker probably will not feel safe at her apartment that she lives in alone. And it's extremely difficult to stop and enforce cyberbullying. Um, it, it's a new thing, relatively, and it's very di difficult to track and enforce. And it's not only student between student, but it also, as you can see, uh, include uh, staff and teachers as well. Uh, category 5, Standard Component 1, to promote the academic success of every student. I train teachers in best practices to promote, promote a positive climate in the classroom. I also provide literature on the effects of cyberbullying uh, to be sent home to, for people to understand what it really does to people. And then I allow all students due process. Um, it's important uh, to have a level playing field for students and staff to hear both sides of the story, but ultimately, uh, find the evidence that supports uh, the, the problem. Adhering to ethical principles and professional norms, I adhere to those by contacting the school resource officer and the superintendent. I had a sit-down meeting with Ms. Walker and the SRO, and I interviewed random students without singling Ryan out who uh, Ms. Walker felt was responsible for this. I demonstrated a personal and professional code of ethics by investigating the issue at hand and not determining it was a prank without the evidence. Uh, I pulled Ms. Walker in first thing in the morning and I provided coverage for her. And ultimately, I was in support of both students and staff uh, by really being an ear and, and doing a proper investigation uh, to find the responsible party. So that's the end of my uh, case study. Uh, thank you for watching and look forward to the rest of the semester. Thank you.